Three days separate the Buckeyes and the Big Ten opener at Michigan State. Letterman Row back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center to break down what we just heard from Ryan Day and a whole slew of Buckeyes. That's Tim May, the 41-year vet. That's Andy Baxter and me, Spencer Holbrook. Let's talk about it. Tim, what'd you learn in here tonight? Other than the fact that housekeeping, Tyleek Williams did practice today. He looked okay, according to Ryan Day. Um, yeah. And then Jaden Fielding not going to do kickoffs. We'll see about field goals. Yeah. Um, with his status, but Austin Snyder will be handling kickoff duties. What'd yeah, you learn to? Good to see Austin lose his black stripe. Yeah. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's funny, he kicked and hadn't lost his black stripe, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, so interesting. Uh, it shows how much the black stripe really means. A uh, man in need, in need is a man indeed. But uh, bottom line is I, Donovan Jackson is back 100%. He feels really good playing. We all saw him make his debut last week for the first time this, this season, the preseason All-American guard. Uh, he's just got to figure this offensive line only gets better from here. Josh Simmons was welcomed him back on the field when he showed up, and uh, they felt pretty good about the way they played for the most part last week. Uh, but that to me is it stands out. I mean, there's other things to talk about, but just having your offensive line whole for the second week in a row, yeah, you're going to be you're going to be interchanging the right guard situation between uh, Tegra Shabola and Austin Cervell. That's a good thing in my book. Yeah, in uh, Ryan Days. Yeah, in Ryan Days. Well, it should be because, you know, you're getting two guys valuable time. But that's number one. Donovan Jackson feels real good. It's real good that he took that extra week or two Yeah. to let that little hamstring kind of situation heal because we know what happened when another guy didn't a few years ago. Andy, what did you learn? Yeah, we'll stay with that left side of the offensive line. Wow. Josh Simmons talked to us, and it was great hearing about the transition that Austin Saraville had to make playing his first career start right next to Josh Simmons. And Josh Simmons was like, he was wowed by how quickly they gelled in chemistry because Josh Simmons missed a lot of training camp with that illness that we've talked about that swept through the offensive line room. So they hadn't played a ton leading up to that opener together, but he feels like their chemistry was there right from the get-go. And he was really impressed with Austin Saravelt. Uh, Simmons himself has transitioned well into his second year with Ohio State. He's confident in his ability. He feels like his talent is taking over a little bit right now, but he's still doing that with controllables, right? Like he's, he's making sure he doesn't make the mistakes that plagued him at the beginning of last year. He hasn't had a penalty so far this season. I think that's been a key thing for him. He didn't mention that outright, probably didn't want to jinx himself, but I think we all knew what he was talking about when he was describing just the kind of focus and preparation he's had with learning this Chip Kelly offense, which by the way, he said, is a little bit more complex. It places more of an emphasis on the ability to read defenses, which he said he's better at this time around. So Josh Simmons was pretty impressive talking to him. Uh, he also says they actually measure their miles per hour on that so second level <laughs> block. So yeah, they're actually measuring the, the offensive yeah. lineman as they're running downfield. So next time you see Seth McLaughlin or Josh Fry or Josh Simmons booking it downfield, uh, yeah, they're looking that back on film. Yeah, no, and Paul, kind of interweaving in there, what he really likes is the way this kind of new approach offensive line-wise under Chip Kelly, it, they, they let, get these offensive linemen out and let them run a little bit, a little bit more. Well, and he thinks it really shows off what really separates them maybe from maybe some other lines is that he feels like they have really good athletic ability across the board. And uh, that was interesting to hear him talk about that. Well, the rub on Josh Simmons when he showed up here was, hey, he's really raw and he's really athletic. When yeah. we saw the penalties last year, they've gotten him, I guess, medium well, if you will, instead of being raw, he's, he's well done, I guess now. Uh, but the athleticism has remained. It hasn't gone anywhere. You knew that coming in, that he was athletic. The run game just didn't really make feature him, it. didn't feature his athleticism correct, right. Tim. Uh, thanks for the, the, uh, That's all right. the adjective, ahead, the adjective I, assist I don't slow there. Um, Remember I told you I was going to do that on yeah, this one. No, I was the, going to slow you down. The adjective assist was, was, was appreciated. Um, I just think that like the athleticism that we heard about when he was at San Diego State, hey, this guy, penalties, but he's really athletic, and you can mold him. He's, a, he's clay. Yeah. You can mold him into things. He's been molded into a really good left tackle. Oh, by the way, he never lost the athleticism. So I think that's interesting. Um, what I learned tonight was that Jeremiah Smith, in my opinion, is pound for pound, meaning based on the year that he is, the second most mature person on the team. I will give the nod to Caleb, to Caleb Downs no matter what. I think he's the most mature player I think we've, we've covered in a long time um, just because he's a second-year guy and how mature he is. But as a true freshman, it doesn't get any more mature than what Jeremiah Smith is. He was asked about the interception with Will Howard tonight. He took the entire blame for it. Yeah. He said, my split was too wide. He threw it up. I should have went and got it. It was on me. And then he said, that was not on Will. That is 
like for a freshman to take ownership of that kind of mistake where you actually turn the ball over in still a one score game even in a game that ended up being a blowout I'm just wowed and maybe I shouldn't be so blown away by this because everything we've seen from him so far leads me to believe that he is this mature but like when it actually comes into practice it's it's pretty remarkable the things that he does all the way up to the ownership that he takes when he does make a mistake not getting the proper split which is what he talked about on that play set him up in the wrong kind of like the wrong it got him discombobulated a little bit because like i've told people i told chris carter this chris carter and i talked about that on my on my tim may show a long time ago one of the things that separates uh, jeremiah smith from your average freshman or senior mm-hmm. is his ability to get between the ball and the defender mm-hmm. and he put himself in a position where he couldn't do that yeah and uh and it, it was good to see him take but let's face it, that was enough that was a 50 50 ball the way it was thrown yeah you know so uh and uh, you know will howard took a little bit of a, a blame for that also but when you hit, when you see jeremiah smith out there one-on-one jeremiah smith wants will howard to think and will howard wants jeremiah to, smith to think the ball's coming to him you know and uh so i don't think they're going to put that genie back in the bottle by any stretch but everybody has a little learning moment yeah uh, i believe the phrase is it Jeremiah down there somewhere Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see more of that moving forward especially if if the freshman is owning up to his mistake I think that shows that you know it's just another layer of that trust between he and Will Howard he said that during training camp is when he truly started to see Will Howard trust him in those situations yeah a lot of accountability taken this week with the defense as well you know they don't have a defensive player of the game we talked about that yesterday in our video afterwards that's what Jim Knowles talked about there wasn't that silver bullet like performance they could Mm -hmm. honor I asked Cody Simon about it. You know, he's a captain of that team. He's the quarterback mm-hmm. of the defense. He said, yeah, we weren't good enough. We have a standard we need to meet. We know our issues. And that goes back to, again, they're facing a Michigan State team this week with Aiden Childs, a quarterback, a good running quarterback. They just saw Stone Earl at Marshall, who kind of exploited some of the weaknesses with this defense that otherwise is really darn good. And I think this week that's been an emphasis of cleaning up some of those issues, um, you know, saying gap sound, being able to not be as spread out as much as they were last Saturday against Marshall. So they're taking accountability with the defense. They know they weren't at their best last week when they gave up 203 yards in the first half along with two touchdowns. Yeah, a good running quarterback though, a guy who's, and by, by good, I don't mean a four, you know, I don't mean Lamar Jackson, but I'm talking about a guy who's crafty, who could make you miss, like Jim Knowles talked about uh, on Tuesday when we got to talk to him. Uh, he said, you can, you can live with a two or three yard gain by, by that guy, but you can't live with a five or six yard gain. I'm paraphrasing what he said. You might have used different yardages in there, but it just that little bitty difference make is a huge deal. And uh, it was good. I mean, I asked Cody Simon about that. It was a it was a good learning experience, or maybe relearning experience for them to go against uh, a Stone Earl. Like I, you can't say that name too many times in any kind of setting, but Stone Earl last week because he was crafty yeah. with his running. He's not going to outrun everybody, but sometimes you don't have to. Just get a little slide, and you're there you've got the first down, or you set yourself up for a real good third and short. So they'll be all over that this week, and their challenge, I know you're going to bring this up, Spencer, is, you know, Aiden Childs is a very good runner in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, he's still working on his passing game. He sure is. I'll just leave it at that. You never – you never know when that's going to click, but it sure hadn't clicked yet, I think, for them from a consistency standpoint. So maybe they'll spend a little extra guy uh, two out of every three plays keeping their eye on Aiden Childs. Yeah, we'll have more on that on Friday during Bold Predictions. Uh, we'll just see what we have in store for that. Uh, anything else, Andy, before we get out of here? It's a shortened, truncated version of this tonight, but we've got a lot to get to because it's Big Ten week. There's a lot to write about. We're going to get to it all at LettermanRoad.com. Anything else before we get out of here? Yeah, I asked Caden Curry about Taiwan Malone because that was the player who stepped up on the defensive interior last week without Tyleek Williams. Again, we don't know if Tyleek Williams will play in this yeah. week's game, but if he doesn't, and even if he does, it sounds like Taiwan Malone will probably play a little bit more. Caden Curry said that you know he and Taiwan talk a lot about baseball together because Caden used to pitch. He's yeah. a lefty. He said his curve ball was his best off-speed pitch. Of course, Taiwan Malone played both sports at Ole Miss, came over here. I asked what was the biggest difference between maybe this year and last year for Taiwan Malone. Caden said, well, he just got rid of that baseball body. You know, yeah. He's fully violent now on the defensive line, especially with his handwork. And so they sense that defensive you know, transition for him, and it's showing up on the field clearly. Yeah, I, uh, I invite people to get on YouTube and watch Taiwan Malone hit some home runs, especially when he was in high school. Nukes. Wow. Nukes. Uh, exactly. And, of course, he was on a – was it national championship team? Oh, yeah. Yes. Ole Miss. Uh, you know, 
uh, yeah, sometimes it's more of the mentality. You got to get that out of, you know, because baseball is fun for these guys that play it, you know? And uh, so it is interesting in that regard. I've always had a, a nickname waiting for him. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what it is until he really Ooh. has that huge breakout game. But uh, yeah, Taiwan Malone, look out. But uh, I'm, I'm more curious on whether Tyleek Williams actually will play on Saturday because sometimes you just don't want to push things if you don't have to. And I'm not sure that they have to hit that emergency button yet. They're going to need it the week after when they play Correct. Iowa because Caleb Johnson is really, really good out of Correct. that Hawkeyes backfield. If you have to sacrifice another week of Tyler, without Tyleek Williams in exchange for getting him back against the Hawkeyes, I would say that is a deal that you should make. Correct. Um, and even with the off week between Western Michigan and uh, Marshall, I, I this think is, this isn't taking Michigan State lightly. No, 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 no. It's no. more of what's better for the long run. Just like with uh, Donovan Jackson, he he probably could have returned after in that second game, but like he said, it still hurt a little bit. You know. Yeah. And why push it? So uh, I think they did the exact right thing with him. Whenever we get an update on Tyler Williams, we'll have it over at LettermanRow.com, where we have all of our coverage. Andy Backstrom, Tim May, Spencer Holbrook. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like the video below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps us out tremendously. And then go over to LettermanRow.com and get all of our coverage. That's where we all have everything that we write, everything that we do on video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will see you in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Friday for bold predictions. Then we'll see you guys up at Spartan Stadium on Saturday for Ohio State and Michigan State on the cock. It's going to be a lot of fun. 730. We'll see you guys over there in Spartan Stadium. We'll see you at LettermanRow.com. Where, where are you going to get to watch it? Peacock. <laughs>